Welcome back to the channel. I am so glad you're here. Today we're going to be testing the uh, ability to basically run a maker space from a battery backup. Like let's say you were going to an event or something like that. I've had this question for years. People are always asking me, can you run 3D printers, sewing machines, CNC machines from a battery backup? Things like arts festivals, maker fairs, even campouts where it's like a whole bunch of makers together and they want to run the machines. People have been asking, can you run these from battery backups? The cool folks at Geniverse who are sponsoring this video took the challenge. I asked them, I said, can I throw a bunch of 3D printers at it and a CNC mill and stuff? And they said, yeah, no problem. So I'm gonna give it a try. You see, there's, there's simple basic math that I could do. Let's say the, the, uh, let's say the battery backup is 2000 watt hours and my 3D printer, like the Prusa Mini, runs roughly 80 watts. You could do some basic math and say you get like, what, 30 hours. It doesn't, it doesn't matter because I don't trust just doing the math. There's too many variables. For example, right now it is 54 degrees out here, which means if I'm printing in PLA, uh, my 3D printer is going to have to run the heater on the bed and the heater and the extruder more often to keep it at temperature. Those numbers are just vague. I'm from Missouri. Our motto is the show me state. So what I'm going to do is just set up a time lapse camera and simulate running an event out here in this field where I have no electricity and just see what I can throw at this thing and how it does. It may not be the most exciting thing in the world like when you describe it, but I'm excited because I have wondered this for a long time. I love to camp out and I'm always wanting to show off cool gear. So this is going to be fun. Let's get started. Okay, to start off, we're using the Jennifer's Home Power 2 Pro. It is 2,400 watt hours. It's kind of a beast. Uh, and the first thing we need to do is plug in the time-lapse camera so it will actually record everything. I'll tell you more about this machine later, but for now, let's just get 3D printers going. <laughs> Okay, I've got the two Prusa Minis printing, and you can see we're pulling a hundred, roughly between 100 and 150 watts fluctuating out of this thing, and it estimates it's gonna run 15 hours just on the charge that I gave it yesterday. That's plenty for an all-day event for two 3D printers. My Prusa Mark III S, unfortunately, would not boot up correctly. It's got a wiring issue that Apparently I aggravated when I drug it out into a field, but what would a simulation of an event be without some kind of a hardware failure, am I right? So we can see here, no problem, we could run two 3D printers. Let's show those actually running. So we can see here, this sucker is running, and this sucker is running, and that one is not. Okay, you're at your event, you have your 3D printers going, but that's not enough. That's not like a maker space, so let's do some stickers. We've got our vinyl cutter here, scanner cutter. We'll draw up some cool stickers and cut those. Oh, look at that ugly print. It's, it's too cold out here, so my first layer is pretty ugly. If you've ever worked in an event, you know what that's like. Let's make the the make robot. The unit I'm using for this video is the Geniverse Home Power 2 Pro. This thing is pretty much the top of their line of their home units that you can buy, and it is a beast. It has over 2,400 watt hours packed in this box. It's super easy to use. You just yank it out of the box, plug it in and charge it, or you can use it with solar panels. They have these weatherproof portable solar panels that come in a nice package that's easy to carry around that just unfold and plug into the back of the unit and with the solar panels you can actually charge this thing up in only three to four hours. If you plug this thing into the wall you can actually get it from empty to a full charge in one to two hours. That is crazy fast especially considering this thing is built to power a normal person's home for up to seven days. You can run your home appliances, power tools, and stuff like that 
off of this thing. Now we're makers, so I'm gonna throw a ridiculous, silly amount of stuff to it in this video, and you're gonna see me really pushing what you can do with this thing in one day. Not only does it have the AC out that you see here on the front, these three ports, it also has USB 3 and USB 2 with fast charging. The batteries on these things are incredibly reliable now. They are LifePo 4 and they actually can go through over 3,000 empty to fully charged cycles. It even has a mobile app which allows you to see everything going on with the unit but I feel most importantly it allows you to set up a charging timer so that you can schedule it to charge on certain intervals uh, you know, just in case of, of emergency, like during stormy seasons or tornado season here where I live in Missouri. If you want to learn more about Geniverse in general, go to geniverse.com. But if you want to learn about this specific machine, there will be a link to it down in the description below. Go check it out. Read the details. This is an impressive unit. Okay, it is nine, a little after nine o'clock now, which means I've been running about... Uh, two hour uh, or an hour and a half. We're down to 88% battery. We've made stickers. The, the brother scan and cut is still on. The two Prusa minis are running. I've noticed that the startup sequence for the Prusa minis, like when the print failed and I had to redo the, the uh, startup sequence where they heat the bed and level and everything, it'll drop down to estimating much less time. It's sucking up a lot more power. I brought out a third printer to really strain the system. When I fire that thing up, it'll, it'll drop down to thinking it only has like five hours left. But once it gets to the printing part, it shoots right back up to like 10 hours. Uh, so that, that Mingda Magician is a major uh, power hog. But so far, right now, this, this Mingda is not printing. It's saying I've got 15 hours left. I don't know how the number keeps going up. I'm not charging this on anything. I think it's just getting to more efficient states on all these machines at that point in time. So we're gonna throw more stuff at it. Let's do some sewing. I'm gonna make a pillowcase. Look at that. Let's check on our power. So it's... Uh, almost 10.30 in the morning. We've been going since 7.30. We have three printers going. This vinyl cutter is still on, but it's not running at the moment. I've been sewing for like almost an hour. And the system says it has roughly between four and seven hours of runtime left. It's at 75% charge. Now the folks at Geniverse, when I told them all that I wanted to plug into this thing, they decided to send me some solar panels as well. You see, this thing doesn't just charge up and, and run all day. You can also plug solar panels into it to charge it on the go while it's in use. So I'm gonna throw the solar panels on it just in case and we'll see what all else we can put on this thing. How about a laser cutter or, I don't know, we'll see what else I have laying around. Now again, there's probably simple math. Each one of these solar panels it has a 200 watt output under optimal conditions. And so if you take that, again, that Prusa Mini runs at about 80 watts, one of these should technically be able to run it. So I really don't think we have to worry about power. Okay, if you're skeptical like me, you realize that even though the three 3D printers are running nonstop and sucking up a bunch of power, the sewing machine, which is still on, and the Brother vinyl cutter, which is still on, they really only consume a tiny bit unless they're actively in use. So I've left them on, they're sitting there, but they were only in use a tiny bit. 
So I thought a good test might be to do a really long engrave with a laser too, while all that's happening simultaneously. So I've got this set up. I'm gonna go ahead and start an engrave and then I'm gonna go eat lunch. laser is running it's sucking up some energy but I still want to challenge this thing so I've, I've grabbed another 3d printer that I'll I'll get up here and get going as well so we'll have a total of four 3d printers operating at the same time some stuff plugged in not running we'll just see what it does see here it is 11 a.m. temperature has gone up to 75 degrees we've got four 3d printers going the laser is cutting right now we've got a vinyl cutter and a sewing machine on but they're not doing anything and we're down to 72 let's see if you can see it better without this we're down to 72 percent it says we have about 7.5 hours uh, eight hours now remaining but we have a 3d printer preheating right now which is the most uh, power intensive part. So that number, you can see it jumping all around. It'll probably come back up momentarily. So you can see it jump to 25 hours. I really wanted to show that this could do some impressive stuff at an event. And so I thought, you know, what more impressive than to pull this big CNC router out. Now the math, the math here is a little bit unbalanced. With everything running, the, the four 3D printers, the laser engraver, the CNC machine running at full blast, and the shop vac, we're pulling over 2,000 watts. I got some footage of it bumping around between 1,800 and 2,100 watts. Now, the, the simple math is that's only gonna be able to sustain if you did all of that full-blown, full blast for like an hour maybe two if there were breaks in there. But the fact is I've now run five jobs on this today and all those are still running. They're running right now. You can see them in the background. And I've still got 38% left on that battery. Okay, it's the end of the day. The sun's going down behind the trees. It's covering up my solar panels. I've been out here filming all day long with a time lapse nonstop. What did I learn? Well, probably didn't learn a whole lot because again, like I said in the beginning, it's kind of basic math on how these solar systems will work. But what I got was confidence. If we look here, we have four 3D printers that have been going all day long. A laser cutter that's been going off and on all day long. We did some sewing. Before that, we did vinyl cutting. I have confidence that this machine would have run all of that no problem. Right now we're at 19% charge. So it thinks it can only run another couple hours right now unless I get the solar panels into the sunlight. This is a lot of stuff to have been running off of it. And <laughs> that CNC machine I kind of threw on here as a joke. I mean, you really wouldn't plan on running a CNC router off of a battery backup. For any extended amount of time because it's going to be over a thousand watts that it's going to be pulling whenever it's running. Actually whenever uh, the CNC machine and the dust collection that I was running when they were going they were over 1500 watts it was pulling. But I was actually pretty impressed with how this handled it. We went over 2000 watts draw at once and I really think if you wanted to go to an event like a Maker Fair or an arts festival or something Run all your stuff off of this, you could do it no problem, and you could even bring along that giant CNC router and do a demo like once an hour or something 
giving it time to recharge in between without issue. I'm super impressed. I, I want to say thank you to them for sponsoring this video, of course, but also for letting me run this ridiculous test so that I could see how it worked firsthand. I've always wanted to try this and I'm happy with the results. I hope you enjoyed this silly little experiment too. Be sure to give us a thumbs up. It helps us out a lot and I'll see you on the next video.